got a thing to fix your hair. <laughs> I knew those four when they was nibbers. Yeah, that's right, you. Shoot them off in bedroom slippers. <laughs> but enough, I'm charged with all to plug a play that shall befall. A play most every man enjoys. And here's a bunch of mama's boys. <laughs> and sport in antic face and rhyme all reason from this place until your ears are spill an ale shall warm your winter chill and if these tales had but one tongue they'd speak and so atone our wrong and of these tales you see before you spend a penny or I'll bore you. <laughs> Thank you.
pledge to you, I am pledged to ring out a full throat in the hope. More merry my tail than a sweet night in gal, when she sings in the coon down below. Oh, when she sings in the coon down below. Lordling, hearken to my tale, more darkling far than nightingale. Of doughty night I will you round. With cause he came to Lyme's fair town. Back in the days of Ackling Dyke, counselor, priest, and elf alike, on King Lear had equal claim. Ithelred ruled, his very name, Vellum Breeves, and full as leather, A and E lean snug together. King Ithelred of Mercia could not have been bloodthirstier. <laughs> when pagan blood to Christ was owed, then mercy and no mercy showed. To Ithel Red, I must confess, our Wessex, our Wessex was but heathenness. He pawned it off on old King Inn and scoffed to Christ, you may it win. In Wessex, strange gods stalked the land. Mm. Still, haunt, still quelled the squalls, hammer in hand, still haunted hills. They were not gone, and Christian shrine line had but one. A chantry, where for fear of fairies, fishwives went to chant Hail Marys. Maria Beatissima Percunta Semper Secula Et Pumeranda Nimium Ad Nunc Et Him Perpetuum Pro Nobis Ora Maria Pro Nobis Parque Maria Et Pumeranda Nimium Ad Nunc Et Him Perpetuum Oh Virgin, lo the baleful wave His cargo carrot kindly save they also prayed unto St. Pete, and Thunor too, as they saw meat. The fishers, not till after dark, would use the chantry, as sea mark, bad they might be, soft workers worse. On front beach they would swear and curse by God's uncouth. Salt wife, sloven, slattern, farm out in a coven, cauldron stirred, a cavernous girl, boiling salt for all they were worth. <coughs> Not as much as their own salt. If salt wife caught a pestilence, she'd cry, All right then, get the end and press this on the war or the wind. Elf bolt will out. Elf shot again. <laughs> Agglestones found on the beach work better than a psalm or a leech. Says elves in hell and lightning blast. Send these to her. Now, full stops last. <laughs> of these elves, yourselves avail. Party folks shall have you hail. Help yourself. <laughs> Thus superstition did prevail. Save in sight of Sherborne Towers, where saints' relics held their powers. Huddle close. Still closer, huddle. <laughs> Rumours brewing in the bottle. Whispers in spittles from black then. Say evils on the march again. Follow me. <laughs> We literally have to, ladies and gentlemen, the in the next Slew a dragon, smote a churl, gave oranges to boy and girl, freed the king of Memphis City, wooed his Egyptian daughter pretty. Now comes he with sweetheart dear to England's shores to wed her here. To wed his daughter. Three cheers to George. Hip, hip. The valiant man. If I can't save Lyme, no man can. <laughs> Who brought the dragon to the slaughter? You did. Who won the king of Egypt's daughter? You did. 
Who in life? Who to life? Has surely brought her. You have. And who in line will try to court her? You! That's right! <laughs> Me! What mock maiden could withstand my charm when I've a sword in her? Here am I, Sandra, the Egyptian princess. If George thinks Lord Blair alone can impress, he's mistaken. For truth be told, my man need not be brash or bold. Just intense and tender-hearted. Sure to finish what he started. Fierce, but not afraid to weep. And not inclined to snore in sleep. Louder voice, but not a boomer. Broad of chest, a sense of humor. Grimly stubble, smile like sugar. And a bubble, a good hugger. <laughs> Tosty, tell me true. Who shall I be married to? Rinky tinker, soldier, sailor, poor chef, rich artist, traffic warden. Sabra <laughs> <laughs> fair. Is this but a dream? Are you the eastern sun agree? Tawny face, eyes, hot as hell. As Tender, tender, young gazelle. <laughs> Down silken dress, embossed with pearls, then tumbles every wanton pearl. Oh, that I might likewise tumble into my arm, I not grumble. <laughs> thy Persian perfume at behest might waft my soul. Unto your breath. Dear ladies, pray, what can I say? I'll call him up here right away. <laughs> Too long he's been out on that spot. If he's caught cold, I'll make him hot. <laughs> At last, mates, here's my lucky day. I'll be right up, and one can say, Jack Robinson. <laughs> Sapra, do not fret. It's me that's coming, so get set. Avast, disses. You'd better not. There's something that I quite forgot. I would have overlooked, you see. But these folks here reminded me. Thanks for that. You're <laughs> my commander. Great that you were here behind her. Lime's good folk are all in trouble. Evil stirs within the bottom. A spittle sprite has left his lair to claim the place called George's Square. At his command, a Turkish knight has overturned the cause of right and swears with you alone he'll fight. Two arms then, and you rate your life. If thou, George, would have me to wife. All arms, Sabra, for I would have thee for my wife. My love. <laughs> <laughs> Was ever night for ladies' sake so tossed in love as thou should For Sabra fair, that lady bright, as ever wit of man could forge. She gives him me himself to judge the Turkish knight with field and spear. Ever to love she may grant him, must he then for far and near. Was ever night for lady's sake, so lost in love as our Sir George. For Sabra fair, that lady bright, as ever wit of man could forge. She bids him leave himself to judge the turkey knight with shield and spear. Heather to love she may grant him, now must he venture far and Godspeed, my knight. Mind how you fare. Confront that sprite in George's square, and learn of him where villains lurk, and so free lime from fear of turf. You folk of Lyme, follow the beat of Junko Dragway and through Street. 
hoping that to end this tale, some fine wench may serve mulled ale. <laughs> <laughs> any George might gently make. We, providing you get out it, will say no more about it. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> welcome or welcome not. Old Worser shall not be forgot, for I am he, the spittle sprite. Come abroad to give you a fright! <laughs> Matthew Mark, rats and mice, caught in the spittles. Children's hands have been my victuals. <laughs> be you of lime or be you a grockle, I will crush you like a cockle with this stave I hold in hand. Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, bless the ground we stand upon. Gentle Jesus, meek and mild, save us from this spirit wild. The wild awaits this club's commands. Dear bow down and foul stoop wing, when this my <coughs> stave makes woodlands ring. No, it boasts greater virtue. It will not merely wound or hurt you. Touch tip the forest floor. It will all life once fled restore. Touch tip again. Again life's fled. The dead that live again lie dead. Witness! Witness the power! Ah! Folk of line, no a children's hand shall you engorge, or else my name is not Sir George. Fi fi fo and fum. <laughs> I smell the blood of a Christian man. Be he a feared or bold as brass, I'll strew his brains upon the grass. <laughs> No, a darker thought is brewing. I'll bring line to rack and ruin. <laughs> Your Christian church to cliff edge clings, precarious as samphire strings. This hazel stave I hold in hand has elements at its command. Inch by inch, edge by tottering edge. There's many a slip, twixt ledge, woo, and beach. Oh, Waza, please relent this time. Have mercy on the folk of lime. Have a heart or lime won't last. I had a heart for my breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> Now hunger I for more mischief, I'll conjure elves, for I'm their chief. Ye Brit, ye Asker, and ye Lim, break bounds, break banks, and over brim. 
Tear up those mills along your bourne, from Gosling Bridge to Bridge of Horn. Tear up the trees along your marge, to lime in spiteful spate to charge. Blow southwest winds from Afric's shore, your chilly cheeks must crack once more. Ye cataracts and hurricanes, drench that steeple with your rains. Until the weathercock complains. Liars, liars, be not pious. Snake and slide in lightning files. Huddle, muddle, soil or rubble. Clay blaze, soak and choke their buddle. Thank you very much. No! Oh, Never touch. Now, since old Waza has no stay, Sir George, the town of Lyme can say. If up my sleeve you care to search, another trick may crush your church. In the church, my Turk lies waiting. He will nip your celebrating. Be gone. In, uh, Lime Bay laurels prove your oh. perch. My Turkish knight shall first besmirch that hallowed ground. He'll spill your gore and nail your mazard to church door with marlin spike. He'll strew your bones. Uh, On the ground. <laughs> <laughs> He'll forthwith screw your bones as bench ends for each pew. Here on Sundays, how they rattle at the thought of your last battle. In the church, my Turk lies waiting. He shall nip your celebrating. Be gone, old worse. Your sap is fled. This much, this day strikes not in steeple's stead. Your Turkish knight will soon be dead. I here pronounce you banished! No!
quarter centenary of the gallery behind you. <laughs> it is high time we remind you this. <laughs> Where did the idea come from for doing a Morris play in Lyme Regis? Well, um, I was, um, I'm, I've been sort of writing something on Shakespeare and I was looking at Romeo and Juliet and uh, one of the mysteries about Romeo and Juliet is how Romeo is able to be present at the Capulet feast because Romeo is a Montague and when he sees Juliet it's at this Capulet masked ball and the reason that he is able to get access to Juliet is because he enters the house as a mummer. So he's not actually invited, but because he's a mummer, he can go into the house and perform. And so I, I, I sort of got interested in, in the mummies, mummers tradition through that, and I found that they used to have mummers in line. And by using sort of, um, uh, sort of local um, writing, uh, uh, the return of the native by Thomas Hardy was quite useful in getting a sense of what the tradition would have been like, but also a, a book by Lawrence um, Whistler, who was a, a local uh, glass engraver in line. Um, he wrote a book called English Festivals, and so I've used these sort of things to try and sort of uh, recreate in my mind what, what it would have been like, and then I've just sort of run with it, really. Um, so uh, uh, that, that was how it came about. You do seem to have inspired quite a lot of local people to join in with your <laughs> Well, I don't, I don't know about idea. inspired, but, but, you know, people have... Uh, some people have come to me saying, you know, that they, they, they've ended up doing things that they never would have expected that they do. I, and I, there was a lady this week has been sewing pine cones on a big poncho, and she's never had to do that before in her life. And then um, somebody else um, has uh, has had to had to stick feathers up to make wings. And I think I think what I, what uh, to begin with it was in my head, and I could see how I wanted it. But increasingly, people were coming to me with ideas, and uh, they could see it very clearly. And I never thought when I set out that people would have something at the back of their mind that mummers meant to them, but people clearly do, and so they were contributing their own ideas, and that's when it gets exciting, when it's, when it's something more than, than you've, you've anticipated. And um, One amazing thing was um, um, a chap called Mike, who is part of the Upland Morris men, actually crafted this, this beautiful driftwood club with a, with a grotesque face and horns on it, and it's a work of art, it's really beautiful, and... Um, it wasn't at all what I'd imagined for that scene, but it was something so much better and something so impressive that um, it's, it's, it's really, you know, work of art in its own right, really. I think it's, it's wonderful. And the fact that he's got that skill at whittling and that he can make something like that just by, by going with the grain of the wood. And uh, I, I was, you know, just thrilled and, and full of admiration for him, really. So mm. I wanted to mention that particularly because it's just, I mean, you can see it. it it's being wielded during the play. Look out for it because um, it, it will stand out. <laughs> Are you from Lyme? No, I'm not, actually. I'm originally from Derbyshire, um, but um, my family have always been on holiday since I was really small in Lyme, so we know it really well. Um, and a lot of the humour in, in the play comes from um, sort of uh, poking fun at grockles. And I think all of us... Well, many of us are, are they have, we have something of the grockle in us and something of the limey, and um, I, I think that's, that's lovely to sort of, to, to have that, that, that combination and, and, and to sort of celebrate that, and that's partly what the play's about too, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. You want me to get my breastplate, but then I don't have this on. I took your advice, Glenn. Um, no, well, you will have it in a later season. Uh, uh, right. Uh, you know when you have a sort of ball of holly in a tree? Yes. Uh, that was sort of what I was imagining, like a, a clump. I think you're not thinking of a ball of mistletoe. Well, mistletoe, yeah, yeah maybe I am. I, but I, I, I don't know. Don't I mean, worry, we can sort of... Yeah. We can probably alter it a bit for tomorrow, okay. or for Saturday. Yeah, I think it's got to be something that he can clutch in his hand, and it's like yeah. a clump. Because um, right. um, the idea came from in, um, in Sir Gawain when the Green Knight with you. Yeah. rides into the hall okay. holding a big clump of holly. Okay. That is the idea, but I don't know. Are you happy if we just do this for tonight and then we yeah. can alter it yeah. so they've got something? Yeah, but sure. you've got some berries that, if, if we need to, more berries. So yes, yeah, we've got more berries on this, definitely. Yeah, yes. it's, it's, yeah. they look really good. They look real big. Okay. Yeah. 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 Did you have to bring the balloons up out of that phone? Oh, I'll bring the balloons up. Hello, darling. Whereabouts? In the house. You don't need boxes. You don't know by now. Yes, the balloons. 
We need one balloon, uh, two balloons, three balloons in a bellum night. I want every wanton curl. Beautiful. No, leave the clogs, Glenn. Uh, we've got the clogs, we've got the clogs. No, not the clogs.